to another episode of Honey University. You know, normally you see me standing in front of a beehive or a bee yard while I'm giving this introduction without my suit on. Not today. Today's topic is deadly bees. And I'm standing here away from the bees because I have some deadly bees that I'm gonna show you and they're serious. And I'm not gonna stand in front of them to give this introduction. Many of you may know me from my other profession as a great white shark researcher. In fact, this shirt is from my other organization. Honeybees are far more deadly than sharks. In the United States alone, more than 60 people a year are killed by stings from bees and wasps and hornets. Only about 10 people are killed by sharks nationwide. Bees can be deadly if you're allergic to them. It can only take one sting to kill you if you are allergic to the venom but there's sometimes you encounter a very aggressive colony of bees that doesn't matter if you're allergic or not. They're gonna come after you and sting you so many times that you may die. They've killed horses, they've killed dogs, particularly these Africanized bees. If you live in some of the Southern states and like the Southwest, uh, there are Africanized bees and they are deadly. So I happen to have a very mean hive that I'm gonna show you. In fact, every beekeeper once in a while encounters a hive like this. I'm gonna tell you how to handle it as a beekeeper. And also, if you're a person and encounter aggressive bees like this, what you can do to try to get away from them. So let me suit up and we'll get after it. I'm actually gonna leave the smoker here. Normally as a beekeeper, we do use smoke. It kind of distracts and chills the bees out. But if you're out on a hike and encounter aggressive bees, you don't have a smoker. So come on. Um, We'll take a walk into this bee yard and I'll actually I'll open a box of bees that I know is, is just a normal hive and then we'll experience the aggressive one. Here we are in one of my Kiavi honey yards and you'll see we got beehives scattered all over the place. And just as a demonstration, I'm gonna open this box right here, which is just a normal everyday honey beehive. Look, no smoke. I take the lid off. Actually, bees are quite well behaved. That, as a beekeeper, that's what we want. We want these well behaved bees that just go about their business and don't make our lives miserable. But every once in a while, we get a hive that just is wrong, mean. So come on over here. Come and take a look at this box. On the lid, <laughs> you see a log. Oh, you'll see someone use some colorful language. Full disclosure, that's not my handwriting. <laughs> and then this is me, I wrote a frowny face. All of these three things mean this is a bad hive. Now what makes bees aggressive? Now there are certain things that can make even normally docile bees aggressive. One is weather. If it's cloudy and a little bit rainy, that makes bees cranky. Another thing that makes bees cranky is if there's no nectar flow. If there's no nectar flow, they become even more possessive of their honey. In fact, when a bee gets aggressive, they're just doing that to protect their honey. If they lose their honey, they're gonna die. So that, that's what the stinging is all about, is they're trying to protect their food resource. These European honeybees, they come from a climate that has winter. So they, they can only make honey during the summer and they have to guard it because that honey gets them through the winter. In fact, beekeepers that live in climates where it has winter, they always have to leave them at least a box or two of honey to make it through the winter. Here in Hawaii, we don't have that problem because there's nectar flow year round, but that doesn't change the genetics of the bee. Speaking of genetics, that is the third thing that can make a hive nasty, is just genetics. That's what we have here. So let's take a look at this box. They're already getting a little bit excited before I even open the lid. Yeah, they're not that happy. Um, and I've seen them worse. It seems like they're a little bit calmer than before, but look at the number of bees around me. So let's say you're a runner on a trail in Southern California, and you encounter this, what do you do? The best way to get rid of bees is to weave in and around things, whether it's 
rooms in a house, which hopefully it wouldn't be, or on a trail, branches like this. Because the bees are following you in circles. And anything you do that interrupts that circle means there's less bees on. Now I've come through. I still have some bees on me. I can just head to the next trees. Go around the branches. And yeah, I got bees stinging me if I'm a jogger, but maybe I don't have 300 bees stinging me. And I come back. How many bees? Not, I didn't have hardly any. I got a few from my camera lady here. <laughs> so if you encounter aggressive bees in the wild, if you run away in a straight line, they're going to follow you. They might follow you for a quarter of a mile. You want to zigzag through obstacles to get rid of them. One time I actually crawled under a house because it was up on pilings. I came out the other end. I had no bees on me at all. So look, bees can't be deadly. These girls are mean. They actually weren't that bad today. The last time I was in here, they were much worse. So how do I fix that as a beekeeper? All we have to do is replace the queen because it's genetic. By replacing the queen within three to four weeks, all the new larvae that turn into bees are from the new queen genetics and the, the beehive very quickly becomes gentle and docile. So that's the plan for me for that hive. In the next two weeks, I'm gonna requeen it. Fortunately, this hive is in the middle of nowhere, so no one's gonna encounter it excepting for myself and my staff. If it was near where people live, I would have requeened it a long time ago. As a beekeeper, you have to be responsible like that. Thanks for joining another episode of Honey University.